So guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to add the functionality to our game that will let us pick our player color. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So before I actually start coding, there's a couple things I want to take care of. So go ahead and open up your player scene, select the sprite node, and in the inspector, go ahead and reset the self-modulate back to white. And we actually want to go ahead and do this for the player bullet as well. So go ahead and open up your player bullet scene, select the sprite, go over to the inspector, and then reset the self-modulate back to white, and then simply save. Then we can actually start coding. So go ahead and open up your save script, and inside the save script, we want to go ahead and add a new key and value to our save data variable. In this case, the key is going to be called local color and it's going to have a default value of FFF. And that actually does it for our save script. So with that done, we want to go ahead and go to project and then we want to go ahead and do open project data folder and then we want to go ahead and delete the previously saved file and the reason we actually deleted the previously saved file is because it actually didn't have our local color key in it and that's the whole reason we deleted it now with that done we want to go ahead and open up our lobby scene so go ahead and open up your lobby scene once you open the lobby scene, we want to actually do a couple things here. So I'm going to start by actually selecting my port label, and then I'm going to do control D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to move it down underneath the port text box, and I'm going to rename it to color label. Then over in the inspector and in the text field, I'm going to make it say color. Then with the grid container selected, I'm going to go ahead and add a color picker button. The color picker button is essentially what we're going to be using to actually set our player color. So with the color picker button selected, we're going to go over to node and we're going to add a color change signal to our lobby. Then inside the function that that created, we're going to actually go ahead and do save dot save underscore data square brackets and then the uh, key that we just made. So in this case, local color and it's going to be s s equal to the color that our color picker button is getting. And then after the color, we're gonna do dot two underscore HTML. And what basically dot two, two HTML does, it returns a hexadecimal color string, which is something that looks like this. And the reason I'm doing that is for readability sake. But you can actually uh, go ahead and delete it if you don't wanna use it. The code should actually work without it and then underneath that line, I'm just going to do save that save game. And then I want to go up and then set a on ready var. And this, in this case, it's going to be the color underscore picker. And then it's equal to the color picker button that we uh, added. Then in the function ready, we want to do color underscore picker dot color is equal to the save dot save data and then the local color and basically what we just did there is we made it so that our color picker button is automatically by default set to the less safe color and the color is basically the property we're getting from the color picker button and that's essentially what that line there does so with that done we can actually go ahead and open up our player script so that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So we're just going to make sure that we save and now we're going to go to the player script. Now inside the player script, I'm going to add a new function and in this case it's going to be called function and then set color. And you actually don't have to add a function since it's only going to be one line of code, but I like separating my code into separate functions. So in the, inside this function, what we're going to do is we're going to do modulate is equal to the player underscore color, which is a variable we haven't actually set yet. So scroll up and set it. So do var player underscore color is equal to a default value of FFF. And then over in the function ready, we're actually going to set a value to it. So in this case, it's going to be player underscore color is equal to server dot players square brackets because we actually want to get the dictionary so it's it's uh, players and then the inside the square brackets it's int parentheses name and then outside the square brackets we're going to add another square bracket and inside that it's going to be local color 
Then underneath that line, we're gonna do set underscore color, and that should actually set the color for our player. So what that line right there does is essentially it gets the player dictionary, which is where we're actually setting the data for our players inside the register player function that you see here. And as you see, this line here sets the player data equal to the save, that save data, and so forth. So that's essentially what that line does there. So we actually go ahead and run our game here. And as you see, the uh, color field is actually set to white by default since we actually added that code in the save file to set it as a default of FFF. So we actually go ahead and join our game and actually let's actually change the color here so you can actually see the difference. So let's just pick a blue color and a uh, pinkish color for this and then join the game. And I am running three instances and there is this annoying bug sometimes. Um, you can probably fix it by doing an a additional check to see if all the players are in fact ready inside the scene. But I'm not going to be worrying about that in this video. But as you see here, if we join the game, all our players actually have the color that they chose from the lobby. So let's actually set it up for our player bullet as well. So in order to do that, we want to go over to our player script once more. And then we want to go over to the function that uh, ad that actually handles spawning the bullet. And so in the sync function spawn bullet, we want to do bullet underscore instance dot modulate is equal to the player color variable. And if we run everything, and then now we set different names and different colors for every instance that we're running. And as you saw there, it did actually store the last saved color uh, in our game the uh, next time we ran the game. So if we go ahead and join the game now and click on ready in all the instances and we shoot, you will see that the bullet is actually the same color as the player that is shooting it. So with that, you're actually done. Congrats. Now in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a simple chat system, so look forward to that. Anyway, I'm going to be leaving a link to the GitHub project in the description. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.